Welcome. In this video we'll talk about legal history, about a cruel emperor, about accusations of heresy and sorcery, and about a very popular Christian saint. This is supposed to be the first installment of what I hope will become a small series of short videos on interesting episodes in legal history. It's a side project which I do purely for fun, so I hope you'll enjoy it. Today is St. Martin's Day, the feast of a Christian saint who was first a soldier in the Roman army and later Bishop of Tours in France. In a normal year in Germany on this day the streets would be filled with children holding paper lanterns and marching through the streets following someone on horseback dressed as a Roman soldier. And these lantern pageants are done in commemoration of the famous story of St. Martin who met a beggar when he was riding along, saw that the beggar was freezing, took out his sword and cut his cloak in half to give one half to the beggar. Now since this year no pageants will take place, I thought it would be interesting to tell you another story about St. Martin, which is probably better attested in the historical sources than the um, episode with the beggar, and which has a lot to do with legal history and also with the city of Trier where I happen to live. What you see in the background here is the so-called Aula Palatina or Basilica of Emperor Constantine. Today it is the Evangelical Church of the Redeemer, but in antiquity it was not a religious building, not a temple or a church. It was part of the imperial palace, which the empress built here in Trier in order to reside there when they took up their residence in Trier, which was quite frequently for a certain period. So whenever the emperor resided in Trier, he would actually be in this building. We can imagine that on the outer walls, his decrees and laws were posted because that was the custom to publish imperial laws by posting them on the walls of the palace. And we can also imagine that he was sitting inside receiving visitors and also acting as the supreme judge of the empire and hearing legal cases. So it's probably right in this building that the famous criminal case against one Priscillian of Avila was brought in the year of 385 AD. Priscillian was, um, was a bishop, as I said, he had developed his own theology, which was influenced by Eastern Gnosticism and Manichaeism. He was at once very liberal and very strict. He um, favored gender equality and opposed slavery, but he also prohibited or he also regarded all sorts of sexual activity as sinful, even between a married couple, and he required his followers to fast even on Sundays. So his teachings were clearly not in line with the doctrine of the church, and a synod of bishops had, had condemned his teachings as heretical, in the year of 384 in Bordeaux. And in the following year he was summoned to Trier to appear before the Emperor and the Emperor commenced criminal proceedings in his court against, um, against Brazilian. The, this is sometimes uh, called the first heresy trial in the history of the Christian Church. That's not entirely accurate, because at this time heresy was not a criminal offence for Roman law, um, and so no accusation could be brought in the temporal courts for heresy as such. Probably the accusation was actually one of sorcery, 
sorcery, at least when it was practiced, practiced with the intention to harm other people, had been regarded as a capital crime in Roman law since the earliest times. Um, uh, probably um, Priscillian and his followers had performed some secret rituals which could be served, could serve as a pretext for bringing the accusation of, of witchcraft, of heresy, um, of, of sorcery, sorry, of sorcery against him. So some bishops were actively involved in the continuation of proceedings in the temporal courts of the emperor, but Bishop Martin of Tours was strictly opposed to this, to this activity. Um, his concerns were perhaps not motivated just by Christian forgivingness, but by a concern for the independence of the church. He opposed the emperor becoming the ultimate judge in what was essentially an internal conflict within the church. And so he was probably not so much concerned with uh, the fate of, of Priscillian, but with the um, consequences of the emperor interfering in such an affair, because even if the accusation was for sorcery, it was clear that the reason why Priscillian was prosecuted were his views and his teachings. Even so, even if Martinus was not so much concerned with, with the fate of his opponent, um, he would have saved him, because as long as the matter was an internal matter for the church, the only available sanction was excommunication exclusion from the Christian community. The church had no power to, to execute someone or to, um, to condemn someone um, to more than excommunication. So Martin of Tours traveled to Trier to the emperor's court and apparently his behavior was very harsh. It is said that he did not so much try to persuade the emperor but commanded him to abstain from executing Priscillian, and it's also reported that at a formal dinner he insulted the emperor by not passing the cup of honor which had been offered to him back to the emperor after drinking from it as the ritual would have required. And nonetheless, the emperor seems to have given in. The emperor promised not to kill Priscillian, but this story does not have a happy end. As soon as Martin of Tours had left, uh, proceedings were taken up again and Priscillian was condemned to death and eventually beheaded along with two of his followers. So the story is a sad story and it marks the beginning of a very dark chapter in the history of European law and of the Christian Church. But I think the actions of St. Martin deserves some respect even so. He stood up against the emperor and he dared interfere with proceedings, the outcome of which was probably clear from the beginning. And he did so at a high risk. Not only did he risk the wrath of the emperor, punishment at the hands of the emperor, but he also risked, risked becoming a suspect of heresy himself to his fellow bishops because at all times, when there is a, an accusation of heresy, whoever defends the heretic for whatever reasons becomes a suspect of heresy himself in the eyes of the prosecutors. And so this was a very courageous attempt to save the life of someone who was probably not a friend of St. Martin, who was actually an opponent within the church. And this courage to stand up to the emperor um, and try to, to intervene deserves our respect. It deserves the respect of all lawyers, whether or not they're Christians, because speaking truth to power, standing up to power, is what lawyers are supposed to do. Happy St. Martin's Day.